I said this yesterday um, without being informed, but just imagining that for all of you, there had to have been this exhalation. And, and I love what E. Jean said about getting her reputation back. Mm -hmm. Anyone who's gone toe to toe with Trump or covered Trump has been smeared by him at some point. But for her to feel like this was the first time her name had been cleared in all these years, um, you could just hear the emotion in that. But for the people who carried this, she kept a secret. So who carried the secret with her all those years? How did you feel? I felt the same way. I felt that she got really battered in this trial. And it hurt to see she's already a skinny woman, <laughs> but a skinny woman of a certain age get really maligned and slammed. And, and they did the same to Carol Martin and me, too. But the, the fact that she weathered it and didn't give up. It was a beautiful thing and very, very moving. I, I, I'm surprised she could get out of bed this morning, honestly. It's probably a little bit of adrenaline. I mean, I, <laughs> she, she, she might um, sort of feel some of that coming down to earth. But I, I wonder what you can tell us about the story that was told in court. I mean, it was it was an a brilliant legal strategy and it worked. But at the end of the day, you were the human beings who had to, to bring it to life for the jury. What was that like? I knew I was telling the truth and that made everything possible. I knew that she's not a, a, a she may be a little eccentric, but E. Jean is not a liar. She's not a myth maker. And it wasn't easy for her to tell me all those years ago when I was heating up nuggets for my children that this we guy all do. had <laughs> we all do. That, we, that, we, that she was raped. And well, she didn't use the word and she told me that he attacked her in the dressing room. And the thing was, he wasn't a president. He wasn't presidential. He wasn't politically adjacent. He was much more like um, a crazy Eddie or a New York retail mm -hmm. figure who mm -hmm. would get on the news in any way possible. It didn't seem out of character, but yet he did that to her and she didn't want anyone to know because that's not E. Jean. She's not a victim yeah. and she didn't want pity. I think it's your conversation with her. I first heard it in um, Jody Kenner, Megan Tuohy's episode of The Daily, where you are basically telling her, she's describing, she's giving you a, a, a a uh, rundown, a play-by-play -play of what happens in the dressing room, and you right. tell her, he raped you. Mm -hmm. And she reacts almost viscerally, like, no, no, and don't ever say that again. Did you abide by her request? I did. I did. I asked her to go to the police. She said no. And by now, I've, I've left the kitchen because I don't want my very young children to hear the word rape, right. although, you know, chicken nuggets are probably worse for them than hearing that. <laughs> but but I, I said, he raped you, Eugene. I will take you to the police. And she would have none of that. None of that. And for all these years, I thought, 1940s, Indiana, Presbyterian, Republican, we just don't dwell in the unpleasant. And it wasn't until her book came out and I read the entirety of her book in 2019 that I realized she's weathered some things. And as her best friend, I didn't even know them. You guys managed to piece together her life from the alleged rape um, to yesterday and to not shy away from everything that we all put on you that this was also a moment um, perhaps the most closely watched um, sexual abuse and rape trial in a post me too movement how did you do that well i think to lisa's point i i think that the strength of eugene is that she is unapologetically eugene mm -hmm. um she's can be a bit eccentric, but she is a truth teller and she is herself. And she was herself in 2019 when she wrote the book and she was herself on the witness stand through three days of pretty grueling um, direct and then cross-examination. And I think generally juries relate to that and they see that and they saw the truth and they believed her. Um, and so I think really just letting E. Jean be E. Jean, mm -hmm. um, letting her tell her truth in the way that she feels comfortable telling it, it worked here. And the architecture of of what was presented 
seem to bring to life what happened at the time. And, and again, the, the jury bought that, the, the story she told at the time to her friends and the other women over a longer span of time who were treated and abused by Trump in very much the same way. Yeah, the, the, the challenge was never E. Jean's account or her life, because the truth was on our side. I appreciate you saying it was a brilliant legal strategy, but we had the truth, right? And so it, we didn't need a ton of brilliance with that. Sure, but a lot of people go against Trump with the truth and lose. That's fair. Our, I, I think our most difficult job, or in terms of lawyering, was just helping the jury understand from E. Jean in her own words, why was she saying things like, I'm fine. I'm fi I'm fabulous. You know, um, as Lisa yeah. said, what, like mm -hmm. she minimizes so deeply. She pushes things so deeply mm -hmm. inside her. You didn't want the jury to be confused. Well, you say this horrible thing happened to you, but I'm, I see 40 interviews where you say you're fabulous and fine. So we wanted yeah. her to explain that in her own words. Well, and five million dollars suggests the jury didn't think she was fine. I think that's right. Um, I want to. Can we talk about the Trump deposition? <laughs> Um, I've covered Trump for seven years, and when he talks, you always know that he's the most likely person to hurt himself. David Jolly just, just made a point sort of in a, in a political way, but, but it is true. He can't talk without harming himself. And, and I wonder what you guys thought when you saw him mistake Eugene for his second wife. That was crazy. And he didn't. Were you like, <laughs> what? Yes. And, and then he did it again. Um, and, and again. It totally I think he does it three times. Yeah. yeah. Um, I, I mean, the, the wildest thing about his deposition is that he didn't just deny the claims. He went so much further than that. He attacked Robbie Kaplan, who was taking the deposition. He doubled down on all of the offensive and horrible things he said, not just about Eugene, but about Robbie, about the justice system. He just, I mean, I guess Trump is also unapolog unapologetically himself. And that means that he will stop at nothing to just say whatever pops into his head. Uh, to sort of protect himself and attack whoever he perceives to be slighting him. It was like a word salad, though. And <laughs> Always then, is. <laughs> when he said, I've studied history for the oh, last yes. million years, <laughs> men yeah. have been doing this to women, unfortunately or fortunately. Right. Just stop talking, man. What is it about the Access Hollywood tape, but both playing the tape and then asking him about it in the deposition that was so important? Well. I'll let Sean speak to the deposition, but in terms of the uh, at trial, it, it was twofold. So there was the obvious thing in the tape, of course, he's describing exactly what he did to E. Jean, Natasha Stoinoff, and Jessica Leeds, right? Sort of uh, moving on them without any sort of warning. Mm -hmm. But what was And why? I mean, he, he, why? he tells well you said. what he did well and why said. he did it. Yeah. He also, though, at the beginning of the recording, describes taking a woman furniture shopping and then moving on her. So what we said to the jury was, that's exactly what he did with Eugene. He was taking her, he was shopping with her until he wasn't. And so we thought there were multiple aspects of that video at trial that were very compelling. What is it about, I mean, what, what would you have done with him if he'd shown up? I mean, did, did, you, did you want him to show up? If you had a chance to cross-examine him, what would you have asked him? We had a lot of questions prepared for him. <laughs> I mean, again, I think it would have just been another example of him doubling down, of him going after whoever, the judge, the jury, maybe, for sure, the lawyers, for, for sure, Eugene. Um, but really, you know, when you have taken someone's testimony in a deposition and then they show up at trial, a big part of it is just locking them into the prior statements that, that they have made. And he has made so many damaging statements, and he is so willing to repeat them and go even further that uh, we, we would have been happy to have him come. Was E. Jean, did she have an opinion about whether he showed up or not? She originally thought he might, mm -hmm. but as the trial got closer, we sort of believed he was a coward and wouldn't show up. Do E. Jean and, and Ms. Leeds and Ms. Stoinoff have a, a connection? Are they, I mean, the, the thing I thought that was so powerful was that the only thing that ties these women together is what Trump did to them. Do, right. they, do they now stay in touch? Are they supportive of each other? They do, because E. Jean wrote a series of profiles of the 19, 26, 26 yeah. yeah, women who um, who she could for the Atlantic magazine. Right. So she, they're they're a an unusual sisterhood, and uh, oh, wow. you know I know Natasha was very emotional during her testimony and during uh, the subsequent days. So it it's been very touching to see their day in court through Eugene. I mean right. she she enabled that to happen. 
What does E. Jean um, sort of understand? I mean, she sounds like she was so motivated by by sort of standing up so that other women would speak out, even against, you know, if you can hold the most powerful person in the world accountable, right. you can you can hold anyone accountable. How much did that weigh on her and how much did that sustain her? I think it was everything. She wasn't doing this for money. Uh, she wasn't doing it. I mean, she wanted to clear her name, that is yeah. for sure, but she's 79 years old. She was really doing this so that it couldn't happen to other women. She was, she, she's not just patriotic, she is heroic. I don't think it's overstating it. What was the, it seemed again from the outside like a turning point for Takapina to make this um, claim that because she didn't scream it wasn't a real rape. What, what was the impact on the jury? Well, th th as we know, that's really when E. Jean had her probably most emotional moment uh, on the stand and, to Sean's point, really showed herself and, and who she was. Look, I, I think, again, when you got nothing, you sort of play the cards you're dealt, right? Fair. But um, what was, I think, a, sort of a misstep was, if you're saying this is, he, I was never there, I, nev I don't know this woman, this never happened, why does it matter if you scream? Why does any of that matter? And and so you, you have a jury now that's confused. Are you arguing she consented or are you arguing wasn't there? And you allowed this very brave and a deep a woman who feels things deeply, if at times she hides it, but to really have a moment there to say, you can't speak to me like this. You can't put this antiquated notion on me. So on the one hand, I didn't think strategically it was going to help him. And it allowed her to have this very powerful moment. I think the jury really, I think we now know, really processed that.